By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing a match of old school against a new patron, Francis. Welcome to the show, Francis. He joined the Patreon program via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So if you'd like to make an episode together as well, check out that page to find out how you can. And Francis is bringing a very scary pink weenie taxes deck to the table. It's red, it's white, it's got Atox, it's got a lot of bolts and stuff. It is a little scary. And of course, Lantex, Lance Edge. But more about that in the deck deck section of this video. And I am battling against him with my Elementals Volt deck. So that's red and blue. And it's got a lot of cool Elementals in there. So hopefully they can protect me from all the aggression. And uh, before I start with the deck deck section of the video, I would first like to mention our sponsor. Because yes, this video is sponsored by our friends from 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for one Trading for sponsoring this video. And now let's continue with the deck deck section. We're gonna start with the deck of Francis. And here we see the deck of Francis. So this is your red, white, Lantex, Lance Edge deck, right? And then just with a lot of aggression, I think maybe it's good to first focus on Lantex and Lance Edge in case you don't know what these very powerful enchantments from Legends do. Uh, Lantex is one to cast, one white, and it says, during your upkeep, if your opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for three basic lands or up to three basic land cards, show them to your opponent and put them in your hand. Like this card is insane. Because if you of course take all the basic lands out of your deck and you always have enough lands, and also you're gonna draw the good stuff because you're no longer gonna draw the lands from the top of your deck. So this is just a really good card on its own, but it gets a lot of, well, I guess you could say fun if you're playing with the combination. If you combine it with Lance Edge, so Lance Edge is an enchant world from Legends that reads any player may discard a card whenever. If they discard a land card, they can deal two damage to target opponent. So you can just discard your lands, throw them at your opponent's face. And of course this works really well with Lantex because Lantex allows you to find those lands. So you can then discard those lands, throw them at your opponent and win the game that way. So the thing is in this deck, it's really kind of meant as a finisher, right? Because he's playing with cheap creatures. We see Savannah Lines and a play set of Atox. And then I'm just gonna include Mishra's Factories to the creature base as well. Also a very cheap creature to cast because there's no casting cost. So he's got very aggressive creatures here. He combines that with, uh, you know, your burn package, Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt. So that alone is 24 damage in direct damage there, right there. Only one red for each to cast. And then he also plays with very aggressive artifacts. So, I mean, this, I think we're in for a short video, to be honest. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to face this with my elementals. Um, that's going to be tough because he's just going to burn me out very, very quickly. Uh, we see four, four vice and uh, also four tablets, copper tablets. And of course, the vices and the tablets work together really well with Atok. I think I kind of like the inclusion of Atok here. It's a one, two creature from antiquity. You can sack an artifact to give it plus two, plus two. Um, and what I like about it is a lot of people, well, a lot of people, but a lot of these decks that I've seen where it's, you know, pink weenie aggro combined with Lantex, Lands Edge strategy. Um, a lot of these decks usually go with Ironclaw Orcs, which is very good. And they also go with um, Granite Gargoyle, which is, one of my favorite red creatures, actually. I love that card. Maybe because it's not reprinted in 4th edition. And as a young Timmy, you know, I would see it in the revised set. And I was like, oh, that's a cool card. Um, but anyway, um, he's chosen a different path. And I think this path is better, you know. Um, because Atog is just such a powerful creature. And the goal of this deck, anyway, is to just to hurt your opponent as quickly as you can. To kill your opponent. And and so the artifacts, the vices, and the copper tablets work together quite well with this strategy. And they're great food for the Atok as well. And the Atok is also a, a creature that as an opponent, you usually have to deal with it because your opponent, in this case, Francis, can have a lot of artifacts quite quickly. So if you just let it be, he can go in for lethal 
very, very quickly before you know it. You know, if, if he's got like a vice and two tablets and he can already make the, uh, the Atok like a seven power creature. So that's pretty scary. So you got to keep that in the back of your head if you're facing an Atok. And of course, he can also sack a factory with it, you know, and you can sack at instant speed. So you can just animate your factory, attack with factory and Atok. And then whatever happens, if, for example, your opponent plays a disenchant, on the, on the factory, you can say, okay, sure, in response, I'll sack the factory to the ATOC, and then the ATOC becomes bigger. So it's quite tough to kind of play against. I, I'm a little scared for this deck, to be honest. Um, the good news for all you budget lovers out there, this is not powered, right? And um, it's, it's pretty cheap to make. A lot of these cards have reprints, so you can just get a reprint version of them. I guess the most expensive here is of course the dual land that's going to be expensive but the rest is very affordable yeah and 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 the wheel of fortune and wheel of fortune is kind of a good card in this deck but you don't even really need the wheel it's good but you could do without the wheel maybe add the winds of change number four winds of change by the way is a card that works together really well with land decks it's some cool synergy um anyway this is the deck of francis now let's take a look at my elementals deck and here we see my deck Elementals Vault. Now this deck has been on the channel a few times and I just love to play with Elementals, right? I mean, when I was a young Timmy, I loved to cast like Earth Elemental and Air Elemental and Water Elemental and especially Fire Elemental. I mean, they're just really cool cards and when you cast them, it's like you're the, you're the wizard of the elements, right? Um, now I did make a few changes for X points because I've taken out the energy fluxes. I mean, in a field like X points, you don't have a lot of decks that run all the Moxen because they're, you know, pointed cards. So the energy flux is not that good in this field. And also I've taken out an Unsummon. And what I've put in is I've put in um, an Hercules Recall because I think it's quite nice with the Mana Vaults. And also when I'm playing against an Artifact Heavy deck, it could be useful. Obviously, it's not going to work very well against Anders and his Triskelions. But yeah, maybe I can use it on my own Mana Vaults. I'm probably going to board it out after game one. And I've put in a Shatterstorm. Now that's a card that could be useful against Anders. Um, and then uh, instead of the unsummon, I've put in a time elemental because, of course, that's the last elemental that's not in here. Maybe it should have been in here. Um, but I think time elemental strategically doesn't really fit this deck much. But then again, kind of as a late game trick, it's kind of nice. So time elemental, of course, uh, one blue and two for an O2 creature. And for two blue and two, you can tap it and then you can return any permanent uh, back to hand. So it can be really, really powerful if you can get into a position in the game where you can actually use it and it sticks to the board, it's not killed or anything, you know? So it's it's tricky, but when it's there and it, it's, it's past its summoning sickness stage, it can be extremely annoying for the opponent and very powerful for, uh, for the wizard that uh, has control of it. Um, now, when we're looking at the rest of the deck, the strategy here is kind of, you know, straightforward, right? I want to drop a mana vault turn one and turn two, try to uh, play one of my bigger elementals. Now there is a side note though, as I'm playing this deck more often, um, it's, it's really interesting to kind of see, okay, when are you going to go all in? When are you going to tap out and play that earth elemental, for example? And it really depends on the type of opponent that you have. For example, today when I'm playing against blue and green, I know there's no swords to plowshare. So that makes a big difference in my strategy. But I do know that I probably have to think about control magic. So you're making different choices uh, depending on the opponent that you play against. For example, when I'm playing against a Swords of Plowshares deck, I'm probably not going to cast my elemental at turn two, but I'm going to wait until I can cast my elemental with counterspell backup, right? So it's, it's influenced by the type of opponent that you have, where, I mean, in the past, I used to play this a bit more like straightforward and think, you know what, if he has it, he has it, but if he doesn't have it, I can just start dealing a lot of damage. Now, that is something to say for, but the result of that strategy was that in a lot of cases, because so many people play Swords to Plowshares, my creature just got killed straight away and I ended up with a tap mana vault hurting me and he only had to invest one white mana at instant speed. So, And also I couldn't then counter the following turn because I was tapped out. So it, it just didn't work really well for me. So I thought, okay, I have to think differently about this strategy, even though it's a lot of fun to slam an elemental turn two, that's what you want to do in life. It's not always the best thing to do in life. And I'm sure if you're one of those mono black players that is used to playing Dark Ritual Hypnotic Spectre, it's the same story, right? If your opponent has a bolt or um, uh, a sword to plowshares, it can just really backfire on you. And then I have to make this note though that I think Hypnotic Spectre is more powerful because it means card disadvantage on the long run for your opponent. Whereas with an Elemental, yes, it deals more damage, but I mean, it doesn't take any cards away from your opponent. And of course, 
card advantage, card disadvantage. It's really what the game is all about in, in a lot of cases. So yeah, this is um, just a really fun deck to play with. I have played this deck at several old school events and it's a completely reprint deck, which is something I also like. And it's just really just fun to, to try to beat the power decks and I have beaten some power decks. So it's, it's, it's pretty good, you know, it's fun to play with. Usually if you take this to a tournament, you go like two, three or sometimes three, two, that's about the max that you can squeeze out of the deck, but it's just a cool feeling to cast these elemental creatures, you know, I just, I really enjoy it. Anyway, um, this is my deck. We've looked at the deck of Francis and that means we are ready for the match. Let's go. Game number one, here we go. I believe I'm on the play. I'm playing uh, blue, red elementals, starting here with a soul ring. Very good opener for me. Passing the turn to Francis, who's on a red, white, pink, weenie, land tax, lance edge strategy. So uh, he's probably going to go really fast. Maybe Savannah lines here, turn one. That will be an ideal opener for him. Lantex, maybe even better, throwing out the tax. Ooh, now I've got a hard decision to make. Am I going to play that second land, enabling Francis to use the tax next turn? I am playing a Volcanic Island here. Tapping four. There's a Brain Geyser for two. Interesting. Maybe that signals that they don't have enough lands in hand. But Francis now can use, of course, the land tax. Almost wanted to draw there. Like, oh no, got to use the tax. Got to remember the tax. You use that in your upkeep. Yeah, this is a great start for him, of course. I'm, I'm a little bit scared for his deck. It's so aggressive. And now he's going to take the lands out as well. So the chances are even bigger that he's going to draw, for example, a Savannah Alliance or an Atog that he can just uh, put on the board. I now have six cards in hand as well, so I wonder uh, if he finds a vice. Could also do that. Play a land, play a vice. Put some damage on me that way. So he's going to draw for turn. Let's see what he can do. He's got a lot of cards in hand, obviously, after drawing those three basic lands from the tax. So probably wants to empty his hand a little bit more. Going to tap. Are we just going to see some direct damage here? Yeah, there's a bolt. Bolt to the dome. That's the thing with these decks, you know, you, before you know it, you're on a very low life total because he's playing four bolts and four chains. So that's 24 damage alone. That's a big problem. And I think now he has to decide what to discard. Going to throw away a basic planes and pass turn. I mean, this deck doesn't need a lot of lands. Of course, he wants lands in hand to use with lands edge, but... You know, to cast stuff, he doesn't need a lot of land. Tapping five. Are we going to see an elemental here? Yep, yep. There is an earth elemental. So uh, a four or five. Really tough to get rid of for Francis. Doesn't play any sorts of plowshares main, which I understand with his deck. He does have them in the sideboard. But uh, this is already a little bit of a, of a pickle for him. Of course, he does have another tax activation. So finding two mountains and a basic plane. Shuffling up again. I mean, one of the lines that Francis can choose right now is say, you know what, you've got a 4-5, whatever. And we see some, uh, some technical stuff happening, by the way. <laughs> There's a basic mountain tapping 3. What I wanted to say, one of the things he can do is just ignore this whole Earth Elemental thing. Say, okay, I'll probably take 4 for a few times, but I'm just going to hurt you so much. Look at this, right? Lance, uh, Lance Edge and then start throwing Lance at my face. Am I dead already? Two, four, six, that's 12 damage. I'm on five. Oh. This is super painful. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 damage. So I'm going from 17 to five. Oh God, I'm so dead. I mean, I'm on five, yes, but that means two bolts and I'm gone. Oh, or, or a land, a land and a bolt and I'm gone. I'm going to throw a land to him. Okay, that's funny. Going to throw a land back. I don't want to play any lands out anyway now because of the tax. So look at that. I've got three lands in hand as well. Kind of land flooded, I guess. So dealing six to Francis here is going to go to 14. Okay, that's not too shabby. I'm still on five though. So I need like three more turns, it seems. With that earth element. Oh, more actually. Because three is 12 damage. I need like four more turns. That's way too slow. But at least I'm a little bit closer. I can get him on 10, half his life if I attack here with the Earth Elemental. 
Hopefully I've got another elemental in my hand. Like I, this is the thing against these decks. You're under pressure so quickly. I, it's a race now. I need to find another source to deal damage, preferably another elemental. If we can find, for example, a fire elemental, I could deal nine next turn. Then maybe if I have a bolt in hand. Okay, here we go. There's a land. Going to put him on eight. Now let's play out an elemental and then I could maybe kill him next turn. If I have like an air elemental 4-4, four, four, I can deal eight next turn. Come on, you can do it. Tapping stuff, okay. Wheel of Fortune, maybe. Oh, that is so risky. Wheel of Fortune. Oh, 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 oh wheel. You're yeah, having an Earthquake in hand. Could have, of course, kept the Quake. Uh, attack next turn, then Quake. But I think I'm just really, really scared. And I want to try to kill him now. Look at this. Francis is going to throw a Strip Mine at me. Going to go to three. Oh, man. I'm not sure if this is the right decision. He's going to draw seven cards. This is so risky. Maybe it would have been better to just pass turn and then try to win. But then again, he had that strip, so that wouldn't have worked, the, the, the Earthquake strategy. Okay, finding another land to throw at his face. And every time I, like, put a land, I'll take two damage, do you want to respawn? And if he says no, then that's okay, that resolves. And then I played a new land. Going to put him on four. Is this it? It looks like it, it is it is the thing. Oh, another land my way. I'm going to go to one. Oh, this is so scary. And now he's going to take his turn. He's going to untap. I mean, if he has a vice, he can win, right? Because I've got five cards in hand. If he's got a bolt, he can win. A chain, he can win. A land, he can win. He's got so many outs. Copper tablet, he can win. Oh, man. It's looking so bad for me. Okay, he's going to tap one. Are we going to see a bolt? Savannah Lines. Okay, Savannah Lines, I can survive. It's a, it's a blocker, though, for the Earth Elemental. But I'm not dead yet. Oh, no. Oh, no. Chain Lightning. That's it. Oh, Counterspell. Countering away the chain. Oh, that is good. Staying alive. Staying alive. Huh, 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 huh. Sorry, I'm a really bad singer. And it's pretty early in the morning here that I'm recording this, by the way. My voice is still waking up. But anyway, countering away this chain lightning. I can't believe I'm still alive. I thought it was so toast after that wheel. Tapping four. What do I have for four? Oh, control magic on the lion. I don't think there's anything he can do main board. Control magic in the lion. Attacking with the elemental. Taking the first game here. Wow, what a surprise. And I think what's really um, good to see here is that yes, Land's Edge was amazing for Francis, but it's also a risk, right? I had like those three lands in hand and I kept dealing a lot of damage with his own Land's Edge. So it is kind of risky, but winning the first game here, so happy. Um, but now we're gonna dive into our sideboards. I guess I'm just gonna board in a lot of blue elemental blasts, try to stop the direct damage, right? That's all I can do really. And he's probably gonna board in a lot of red elemental blasts, but uh, we'll see that in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So now it's Francis on the play after he lost that first match. Sorry, that first game, I should say. So if I can now win the second game, I got the match. So there's the mountain by Francis passing the turn. Okay, no vice. That's already good for me. A little bit scared of the vice. Tapping uh, blue. Okay, there's a mana vault. So next turn, I could, if I want to take the risk, maybe cast an elemental. But let's first see what Francis can do. Probably going to drop a land here. So no turn one play for him, which is really good news for me. In uh, game one, that land text uh, was kind of scary. Finding another mountain. There's a copper tablet. Yeah, that's going to be painful. Going to take a damage from the tablet. Drop to 19. Draw a card for turn. Putting the dice there so I don't forget about the triggers. Ooh, City of Brass. More pain, right? Oh, and, and damage from that city. Going to go to 18. Next turn, damage from the Vault as well. I mean, this Air Elemental is good. It's a 4-4 Flyer, but it has to stick. Like, if Francis has a way to get rid of it, I'm in huge, well, huge problems. But I've got a problem because I get damage from the Vault and from the Tablet. It's going quite fast. But let's first see. Can the Air Elemental stick? I wonder if Francis boarded in the Swords to Plowshares from the sideboard. And of course, Francis doesn't have any uh, white sources yet. So this is pretty good. Just uh, playing a factory. 
So it's looking okay for me. Okay, tapping two red here. What's he gonna do? Lightning double bolt, uh, lightning bolt chain. I mean, the silver lining here is that it's a two for one and he's not throwing them at my face, but the bad news here is what I kind of feared as well. Now I've got that mana vault that's gonna hurt me. I do play with the Hercules recall to kind of get it back to my hand. But yeah, there's just uh, two points of damage here. So going from 18 to 16. And next turn, of course, Sir Francis can also attack with his factory. Oh, look at this. I'm just taking so much risks. <laughs> it's almost a suicide deck now. Anyway, I'm on 15, of course, taking the damage from City of Brass. Playing my Earth Elemental. And of course, my, my, the, the, my thought process behind this is that he's used two bolts to get rid of one Air Elemental. Probably doesn't have the firepower to get rid of my Earth Elemental. And I can use that to block the factory. So that's going to save me two damage. And yes, I'm going to take an extra point of damage from the vault. But it's better to have a creature online than, than not. Ooh, there's a planes though. I really hope he doesn't have a swords. If he's got a swords, no, 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 no. Don't tap the white. At least not for a swords. Okay, Lantex, good. I was so worried if that's a swords. It's almost already the end of the road for me. So I'm on 15. He cannot attack here, I feel. So next turn, I'm going to take three points of damage, right? Two from the vaults, one from the tablets. So I'll drop to 12. Oh, man. I need to get rid of those vaults. That's the hard thing with Mana Vault. Like, it's a really good card, and it's not restricted in old school, but it, it deals so much pain. Like, you see, people prefer just to play them with Felwer Stones, for example, and, of course, Moxen. But we're playing Underpowered here. And I do like the Mana Vault. I think it's a cool card. Tapping two red and one. What are we going to see? Wheel of Fortune. Oh, I also had a wheel in hand and two more elementals. Wow. So my hand was kind of full of elementals and volts, which is basically what the deck wants to do. I'm not unhappy drawing seven new cards. And I think Francis already had a land drop, so he stepped out at the moment. So at least I'm going to start with seven in hand, eight, eight after draw, of course. So that's kind of nice for me. I am going to take three damage from, uh, from myself, basically. My own vaults and the tablet then from Francis. So I'll drop to 12. Yeah, taking my turn here. Take my damage. Going to go to 12. Draw my card for turn. Now this is really a tip I have for people. If you're playing with vaults and against tablets and stuff, put the one of your dice on top of your library so you don't forget. At least it really works for me. I don't always do it, but... When I do it, it works for me. There's another Volt. Oh, God. Am I going to play more? St Don't tap the Volt, man. Anyway, first attacking for four. I guess that's the easy part. Oh, I think I'm going to tap another Volt. I'm like so deep in the rabbit hole right now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no. I'm going to go to 11. What am I doing? That's four damage a turn. Oh, God. Maybe I have... Like something in hand, like Hercules Recall in hand or Shatterstorm in hand. Fire Elemental. I mean, I can smash him for nine, yes. But uh, four points of damage next turn. I'll drop to seven. Oh, man. At least I've got Fire Elemental and Earth Elemental on the board. Like that's one of those check moments, bucket list moments. I just it's really cool to play with this elementals deck I have to say it's just so nice it, it's got a nice feeling to play these elementals it's just really cool anyway so Francis of course also taking damage from his own tablet so he's on nine now so I can I mean if I can get rid of that factory somehow and he doesn't do anything this turn I can kill him next turn right I'm just I'm just playing with literally with fire here with that fire elemental it's like once you've chosen to start tapping down those vaults, there's just no stopping. So I'm on 11. France is on 9. This is quite an interesting game number 2. I think if you're Francis, without having the information of what's in his hand, um, I would definitely keep the factory on blocking duty. Right? You don't want to attack with it anyway now with that fire elemental. And if I would have burn in my hand, I wouldn't play it on the elementals. I would just go for my face. 
Like, let's say you've got a bolt in a chain, right? You want to play that on me, put me on five. Next turn, I'll go to one. You know, I think that's probably better than trying to take care of one of the elementals. And I mean, I do play with shatters. So, you know, when he animates the, the factory, there's always a risk that I play a shatter. But it looks like Francis is kind of counting here, which is scary. I mean, I don't like the fact that he's taking so long for his turn. I think he's, he's finding a way to kill me. But yeah, I'm taking four. I will, I will drop to seven, no matter what he does. But I've got, I mean, I have lethal on the board. Problem is that factory. Okay, he's going to tap two red. Are we going to see a double bolt? Or are we going to see a lance edge? There's a lance edge. Does he have enough basics? Oh! The pain, I can just feel it. Is he gonna throw basic or just lance at my face? Don't have to be basic lance. There's a plane, it's gonna drop to nine. I mean, he just needs a few more lance. Gonna tap the plateau here, it seems. No, untapping it again. I thought maybe there's like a subtle bolt. If he does that though, he doesn't have enough mana anymore to animate the factory. I think that's something that he's gotta keep in the back of his mind. Yeah, passing the turn. Oh, taking damage. Gonna go to five, three from the vaults, one from the tablet, five life. I've got like one more turn. If Francis doesn't find another way to deal damage to me. I really shouldn't tap that uh, city. Attacking here, nine into the red zone. So he's gonna animate the factory. Do I have a Shatter? That would be amazing here, a Shatter. I don't think I do or else I would have done it before blocks are declared. So looks like he's going to block the Fire Elemental. Take four, go to five. And I think that's, that's it. Then he would drop to four next turn from his own tablet. If I have two lands in hand, I can kill him. Throw some lands. I've got seven cards. What kind of cards do I have in my hand? No lands? Only need two lands to throw two lands at his face. Untapping again, maybe because it's a blue and a red, maybe I've got a um, Hercules Recall in hand. Would be quite good with the vaults. I mean, I have been thinking about maybe changing the Elementals deck to playing with Nevenerals discs as well and then Hercules Recall. That's some nice synergy there. To play that next to the elementals. But anyway, let's first see what Francis can do here. He's going to throw another land at me. I'm on three. Oh, I'm so dead. Unless I've got a Hercules recall. So I've, I'm on three. Oh, there's a bolt. Classic bolt to the face. What can I do against the bolt? Going to go to two. What do I do? Oh, I'm going to play a fork. I'm going to fork the bolt. Yeah, but that's not going to save me. It's fun, though. I can get him to one. Oh, man, man, man. What a cool game number two. Oh, man. This is so cool to look back at. I wonder, am I going to show, did I have that Hercules Recall in hand earlier in the game or not? Ah, oh, so close, so close, so close. No, I didn't have that Hercules Recall. I did have an Earthquake, though. So I could have quaked for one. No, but then I wouldn't have the mana for the fork anymore. No, no, no. Ay, 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 ay. It is what it is. I mean, this was, it was, I think I played super risky in game two, but I kind of understand as well, because if you wait too long against Francis, he's going to burn you out anyway. So, uh, you know, you got to play the biggies, but there was just too much damage coming in from the mana vaults, unfortunately for me. Anyway, uh, this was game number two. What an excitement. The good news is it's 1-1, and that means we're going to have a game number three. Game number three, here we go. So I'm on the play after losing that second game, starting with the vault, passing a turn. That's not too shabby. But we saw those vaults uh, really hurting me in, uh, in game two, so it is a risk. Could be helping Francis actually with those vaults. Anyway, let's see what he can do. Starting with the plateau, are we going to see a turn one Atlantax again? There's a vice. Okay, it's not too bad because I played out the vaults, only taking one damage. Could be a lot worse. 
So he did keep the vices in when he's on the uh, on the draw. Sometimes you see players taking the vices out, finding a mountain, another vault. So now four cards in hand. The vice is no longer hurting me, but I mean I don't have double blue to counter. And also in my deck, the thing is with those um, elementals is that basically they all have a double blue or double red in their casting cost. So you really need to find the right combination of mana. Here's a Lantex by Francis. Nice for him. Oh, it's hard. It's tough to play against an active Dex. And this is nice, right? This combination of Vice and Tex. Because I'm like, if I play out a land, it means it can use his Lantex for longer. Maybe I don't even have a land. Maybe it's not even an option. But if I keep cards in hand, the vice is going to work. Anyway, we see Francis here. It looks like he's not using the tax, though. Probably forgets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're not playing like a big tournament or anything. So that's fine. He can, he can look up his basics. In general, old school is pretty relaxed. But it's always good... Do you just practice those triggers like uh, for yourself, right? Because you want to you play the game the way it's meant to be played. So shuffling up. So now having a plains and two mountains. And I can really advise that to everybody to just try to, if you can, try to record a game and just look back at yourself. You make more mistakes than you think. Because I also thought I was a lot better of a player until I started recording myself. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> anyway, uh, Francis dropping a planes. Finding a Savannah Alliance. So that's a 2-1 vanilla. So he can start uh, attacking with that. Maybe I've got a bolt in hand. I mean, I am playing with full play set of bolts. Haven't seen a single one, though, in this match so far. But I am playing with four in my deck. There's a chain lightning on my life total, dropping to 16. If I don't play anything out here at instant speed, I'm going to take another damage from the vice. And my upkeep would drop to 15. Yeah, look at that. Taking the damage from the vice. Going to go to 6. Come on, show me some lands. I'm being pretty conservative with those mana vaults now. Tapping. What am I going to do? Oh, play flash fires from the sideboard. Oh, wow. In a way, you know, yes, flash fires does mean that he can probably use his land decks until eternity. But on the other hand, he can only play at one land anyway. So I think that's kind of the, the idea behind this play. Okay, there's a Hercules recall. Look at this. I'm going to float the mana that I can now use to recast my mana vaults. But I think the big problem here, the elephant in the room is that I'm here is that I'm missing a land drop again. And I need at least a double red or a double blue to start playing out my earth elementals, my water elementals, my all my elementals, basically. So this is a nice little trick. Um, but yeah, the problem still remains that I need a basic land, an island or a mountain to just start playing out some elementals, put some pressure on the board. Francis, of course, can start using his tax again. And he's going to look at his hand to decide how many cards he wants to look up with the tax. He's going to go for planes here. And I mean, at a certain point as well with the tax, I kind of feel like, okay, he's taken out all the basics from his, uh, from his library. And I'm just forcing him to discard cards now anyway. So whatever. I'm kind of ex accepting that the tax is there. So he's shuffling up. So three more cards. Drawing another card. So that's four extra cards. He probably has to discard. Then again, I mean, his deck is full of cheap castable cards, right? So if he can find, for example, a second liner, that would be quite good. Going through his hand. He, he's got to have like nine cards in there at least. So four cards in hand for me.
And I mean, another, another thing to keep in the back of your mind, I think that's maybe why Flash Fires is kind of okay. I'm, I'm then forcing Francis to play up more lands instead of keeping them in hand for his for his lands edge. I don't know. I was I was kind of doubting the Flash Fires. Let me know in the comments below if you would board it in against a text deck. Anyway, there's the attack for two. I'm on 13. And now he's got a discard, I think it looks like, because he's going through his hand. So discarding a factory and a copper tablet. Okay, wow, I wonder what else he has in his hand because that copper tablet looks quite good. He can drop the tablet, you know, and start next turn, start putting more pressure on me. But maybe he's got multiple in hand. I'm always kind of scared when people start discarding good cards because it means what they have in hand is even better. Anyway, I'm keeping my fingers crossed here. I need to find something. Fireball for one <laughs> on the line. I mean, you got to do what you got to do, right? It's really tempting here to, to, to use those mana vaults, but I don't do that for obvious reasons. I don't want to hurt myself. And I'm just, I, I just cannot find lands. That's a big problem for me here. We don't see Francis, by the way, using his tax here. So I have the time in his game three. You know, I'm on 13, which is reasonably healthy. Uh, Francis is not putting a ton of pressure on my life. The problem right now is the magic gods not granting me a land. I've got the vaults. Give me a land from the top, please. Let me play out an elemental. I'm just keeping quiet. Try to... No, am I... I'm passing the turn. I'm, I'm sure my hands... Knowing me, I'm sure my hands full of counter spells that I cannot play because they don't have double blue and some elementals that I can't cast. Ay, 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 ay. Anyway, let's see what Francis can do. There's a mountain. He's probably going to play out something, right? Three. Oh, man. There's the Lance Edge. Are we going to see a blue Elemental Blast? Blue Elemental Blast here on the uh, Lance Edge. Okay, that's great for me. So I'm able to counter it away. Because his hands is full of Lance, I believe. And there's the pass. So give me a land. Give me a land. Give me a land. Come on, give me that land. Another mana vault. Yay. Wow. Oh, pardon my French, but this is not what I was looking for. Mana vault, mana vault, mana vault. Let's see what, uh, what Francis can do. Hopefully not a lot for my sake, but I mean, he's bound to start playing out some useful stuff at a certain point in the game. There's a factory. There's a line. Yeah, so that's four damage on the board next turn. That's some pressure. Passing the turn. Yeah, I just really need... Oh, again, just passing. <laughs> I mean, Francis is giving me so much time. I can't complain about that at all. He's giving me the time, but I'm doing nothing with it. Because, yeah, you need the right color lands to start doing stuff. So giving Francis a lot of space here, playing out another planes. He could just swing in for four, right? I mean, is there really more that you need to do? Tapping two, a red and a white. There's an ATOC. I wonder if I have another red elemental blast. Or sorry, blue elemental blast. I can, of course, use that blue blast later as well at instant speed. There's the attack. He's not animating the factory. That's a little bit surprising. Dropping to 11. Going to 10 because of the vice. So he's keeping three open. That surprises me a little. Oh, look at that full play set of mana vaults. Is there some kind of price that I'm getting here? So another mana vault from the top. Ah, maybe I should have kept that fireball, right? I could have played a huge fireball. But then I probably would have been dead already to that one single Savannah Lines. I mean, that was ages ago that I killed that one. Oh, mamma mia. Yeah, pointing out the lands that I just need double blue or double red to do something with my deck. Oh, another Lions. Yeah, now Francis is really starting to cast his stuff. And that makes sense. He's, you've given me enough time, my friend. You know, <laughs> just kill me now. 
Maybe I've got another turn in me. I'm mean, still on 10. He's probably going to swing in with everything here. He could deal two, three, five points, half my life. Because I don't think he wants to sack the vice. So again, not attacking with the factory. Maybe, maybe he's not seeing it. Maybe he forgot about his own factory. Or maybe he's got a reason. Anyway, I'm on a six now after taking the damage from the vice. Oh, 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 just passing the turn again. Come on, people. Come on. A slow death. Actually, quite quick death now because he can kill me here. If he just animates the factory as well. Yeah, now he's going to animate or not. Going to tap two more. There's a copper tablet. Okay, that works as well. He can just attack for five, pass turn. I'm dead from the vice and the copper tablet. So double dead. Or you could attack, sec your vice to the ATOC and kill me that way. Yeah, just turn it sideways, kill me now. There we go. Yeah, he's gonna... No, he's not. Okay. I'm on one. He's probably... I mean, I can. I, I get Francis. He's thinking if he has a blue blast. But yeah, this is end of the road. Oh, there was a land on top. No, an island. Are you kidding? Oh, look at that hand. Oh, yeah, that's the thing with my deck. I mean, yes, he had a lot of answers to that, but... Nah, this game 3-3 three, three was a little bit frustrating. The first two games were so much fun, and then game 3, yeah, when you don't find the lands, you don't find the lands, it happens. And it also shows actually a real weakness of the Elementals Fold deck, is that for most... Um, you know spells that I have in my deck. I need two blue or two red. That's part of the deck But I am only playing with with two colors So I kind of feel that's that's doable in this deck. Anyway, this was the match Thank you so much Francis for uh, for playing here and of course joining the uh, program as a patron of the show If you'd like to become a patron as well check out patreon.com slash Timmy talks and before you go Please take a moment to like share and comment on these videos all these things are free and really help the channel move forward and of course like i said before you can also become a patron of the show and one of the perks is if you become a patron you get uh, your name in the end scroll at the end of every single video what end scroll this end scroll what shall we do with the drunken sailor what shall we do with the drunken sailor what shall we do with the drunken sailor Somebody can see.